Brittany here with day 49 of our 67 days towards our own at home practice. Today we're going to be going over a review of our whole entire last week, um, a day early because tomorrow we'll be reviewing our whole entire program and what we've done thus far. Today we are only going to be going through the new postures that we learned and nothing from our past besides our bound angle because that is an awesome hip opener that it goes alongside with everything else we've done. So let's get started. Palms on our knees, sliding them into the body, sitting up nice and tall. Deep breaths in. Complete breaths out. Two more just like this. As we inhale, taking in everything our body needs. Slow, steady, calm. And as we exhale, letting go of everything no longer serving us. One more deep breath. Gently bring our hands together at heart center, setting an intention for our practice. I offer you Svadhyaya, or self-study, and honoring that in our practice by getting to know our mind, watching our thoughts without judgment, getting to know our bodies, watching our movements, without judgment and getting to know our awareness, our perspective, our point of view by watching our own reactions to ourself without judgment. Not trying to change anything, just noticing. If this is a nourishing intention and if not setting any other intention that will keep your mind on your mat. Grounding the palms back into the body. We'll go through two rounds of Vashrika Pranayama, starting with three deep belly breaths. Inhaling even slower, even steadier, filling up our air with lungs, preparing our body for a Vashrika, forcibly inhaling and exhaling at a rate of one breath per second. Beginning after our next exhale. engaging our final round. Our Vashrika Pranayama helps us find our energy, helps us find our will, and helps us let go of any depressed thoughts and tendencies. One more deep breath in, complete breath out, beginning our final round. in, complete breaths out, just two more, gently opening eyes, our eyes, bringing the soles of our feet together, gently pressing through our toes, starting to open up our hips, hands by the side, sitting up nice and tall, three deep breaths here. Gently pressing through the toes into our knees, opening up our hips. This is a great way to start any hip opening practice. It's a light hip opener and it also realigns the spine, keeping our body in the right alignment while we open our hips. Really important. One more deep breath in. Complete breath out. Gently opening our eyes. We are going to pop on up, nice wide legs.
starting our practice with our wide-legged forward bend, our garland pose, and our skandhasana, our side lunges, our malasana and skandhasana. These are two really awesome standing hip openers we learned this week. What's really important about setting up the foundation for these postures, engaging the thighs towards one another, engaging the knees towards one another, and getting your body in the right alignment to begin with so that when you're down there opening your hips, one's not getting a little bit more open than the other, keeping everything balanced, everything centered. Finding our center, chest floor, hips floor, arms up, deep inhale, Exhale, folding forward, keeping our body spine nice and straight in line with the ground, surrendering the palms down, spreading the fingers nice and wide, inhaling, pressing through the fingers, shoulders together in the back, surrendering the chest, deep breath in. Exhale, engaging the elbows into the body, into one another, surrendering the crown. Inhaling up. Exhaling in. One more deep breath here. Pressing back up. Our wide-legged forward fold is a nice way to help us enter into our hip, entering hip opening postures, loosening the body up, like going into our skandhasana. We just gently bend into our right knee. We want to keep our knee as close to right over our ankles can be. We don't want it popping forward and going like this, putting too much pressure on our knee. Sticking that booty out. And then bring your left foot up. Maybe staying here. This is still getting a lot, and it's really good in the beginning for opening you up. Or a little bit more, hands to our heart. If our hands are gonna be to our heart, you see a lot of people being here. Keep those hands down. When your hands are coming to your heart, chest back, butt back, you're gonna feel it a lot more on your thigh. You can get the right positioning, keeping your body centered. One more deep breath. <sighs> Surrendering the palms, coming back to our center. Now when we go in between these, it's nice to go through the forward folds um, because it's going to help the forward folding and gently maneuvering the spine and hinging the spine in the right way, pressing through the fingers, shoulders together in the back, straight spine. Exhaling, allowing the spine to inflect forward, engaging the elbows in to make sure it stays in line, keeping them towards one another. These are nice movements that are helping our back stay comforted, stay in alignment while gently opening the hips and also giving us a break, going from strengthening to lengthening. Gently pressing through the fingers, bending into that left side, bringing the right foot up, giving a deep inhale. And then maybe bring our hands to our heart. Two more breaths here, sticking that butt up, keeping our knee in line with the ankle, not letting it come too far forward, sticking that butt out. Coming back to center. Inhale, pressing through the fingers, eyes forward, shoulders together, flat back. Exhale, elbows into the body, into one another. Deep breaths in, complete breaths out. Skandhasana is a really great posture for runners, building of nice lean muscles in the legs. Pressing through the fingers, coming up. This could be an awesome posture running through it for three rounds. Three breaths on each side. Um, so just so you have that in case you ever want to do that on your own. Now we're going to go into our, um, our garland, our malasana. Walking our feet in. Now, we walk our feet in because if our feet are all the way out here and we're sticking our butt out, um, we're not really opening our hips when we're putting our, our elbows in between it. So walking the feet in gives us a little bit more stability. You can do this as the closer your feet are together, the more you're going to be forcing your hips open with your elbows between it. Finding a comfortable place to begin with, I recommend having the feet out so they're catty cornered about 45 degrees out from the hips, sticking that butt back, starting off with the elbows on the knees. Hands to our heart, chest up, just like in our skandhasana, a strong chest. 
and then maybe bringing the elbows in between the knees, really opening them up. Deep breaths in, complete breaths out. You notice my feet are gently splayed out to the side. Focusing on our body as we breathe deeply into it. Exhaling out tension. Let's come on to our hands and our knees. Going into our pigeon and our lizard on each side before ending with our two new awesome poses, our cow face pose and our awesome twist. So let's get into our tabletop. Bringing our right foot forward. Hugging the left knee towards the right. Coming into a nice low lunge. We want to start the off in the low lunge here because it helps us find the right positioning of our hips. If our hips aren't centered when we start this, we can again be throwing our hips out of alignment. So the low lunge helps us find our nice alignment here. Coming into the lizard, we bring our hands inside our foot first, no matter which variation of our lizard we want to go into. Now we, we pick the variation that works best for us. We have our options. For some of us, simply being inside our hip is gonna start opening it up and this feels good. So just focusing on this, this is already a hip opening posture. Keeping this, our left knee forward, surrendering here, deep breaths. We can even just start bending at the elbows here, grounding our palms here. This is another variation that's really hip opening. We can bring our right arm underneath our right leg, adding a little bit more into it. We can stay here just rolling onto the side of our feet, gently opening up our hip. We can stay here gently opening up and then be bending in like we do, we were just doing before. So we have so many options here to really make this posture an awesome hip opening posture that starts to prepare our hips to get ready for, for bigger positions like our pigeon. Taking one more deep breath into any tension we're feeling. Coming back up and coming into our lunge. We'll walk our foot over so that our right foot is in line with our left knee. Bring our hands nice and wide. Bring our knee out to the side. Keeping our hips centered. Maybe you don't even get down. Maybe your knee doesn't get down. Maybe it stays here. And that's fine, and this is how you're gonna start your, your pigeon. Maybe you're using one of your blocks underneath your knee to hold that knee up so it doesn't take much attention off so that you can come into the expression of opening your heart. There's so many different ways to work with this posture, find your comfort, one more deep breath into whichever one you're enjoying. And then guiding your body back into our low lunge. We're gonna bring our right knee back to meet our left and switch sides. Bringing our left knee forward and doing everything on the other side. So we've been doing these postures in the warrior sequence. These are standalone postures, just like everything you're learning, just giving you different ways to use it. So that in your own practice, you can use all of these postures in different series and make for you depending on your day. Hugging the knees towards one another in our low lunge, solid foundation, coming into the variation of our lizard that nourishes us most, whichever one we find it to be today, taking three more deep breaths into it. Breathing into any tension we're feeling, exhaling, letting it go, just two more. Making sure our hips are centered. We don't want to be sinking into either side. And then gently coming up. Back into our low lunge. Bringing our left foot in front of our right knee. Allowing our left knee to gently coming out to the side. Maybe bringing something under the knee making it easier to open the hips. Finding our comfort here. If we are pressing up, pressing through the fingers, shoulders together, never putting too much tension on our hips. Deep breaths in. Complete breaths out. Just one more. 
and then gently coming back up. Not doing how I just did it, that wasn't a violent, be gentle. Coming to the center of our mat, knees together, sitting on our bum, and going in to our nice gentle twist. Opening up our sides, twists are such an awesome way to end our practice because they are so detoxifying. Um, and these postures just flow so well together. Left ankle, left hip, right ankle, outside of the right knee, sitting up nice and tall. Arms up, bring our right hand behind us, left elbow to the knee, gently staring over the shoulder, going into the variation that nourishes us most. Elbow to the knee, hand to the heart, it's a nice introductory variation. Doesn't put too much pressure on the hip, on the twist. Putting our arms down, the second you put it down, you feel it presses a little bit more against that knee, opens you up a bit more. Final variation, taking left elbow, right knee, walking the hand under the right knee, grabbing it with your right hand behind you. Taking one more deep breath here, nice straight spine. Peeling our arms up, back down to the side, left ankle to the right hip, stacking the knees as best we can. Again, if you're, that means keeping your foot here, that is completely fine. If we need a strap, grabbing hold of our strap with our right hand, bending our right arm behind us, left arm behind, down and behind the back, Inching the hands towards one another on the strap. Coming as close as they can. Deep breaths in. Complete breaths out. This posture is amazing to help us release our depressed thoughts. It's opening our heart while bringing our hips back together. Nurturing our hip opening postures. And it just feels really good. It lengthens the outside of our hips while we've been focusing most, most of our practice on lengthening the inside. Very great complimentary stretch. One more deep breath. Releasing the strap. Releasing the hands if we don't have the strap. And gently switching sides. Right ankle, left hip. Left ankle, the outside of the right knee. Sitting up nice and tall. Inhaling our arms up. Left arm comes behind us. Right elbow to our right knee. Coming into the variation that suits us best, finding our comfort and taking three deep breaths. Whichever variation we enjoy most, deep breaths in, complete breaths out. Just two more, breathing into any tension we're feeling. Exhale, letting it go. Gently releasing, inhaling back to center, bringing our left ankle over to our hips, stacking the knees. Using our strap, left hand behind the back, right hand down and around, walking our hands as close as they want to be. Deep breaths in, complete breaths out. You may notice one side is a little bit tighter than the other. One hand you can reach, the other hand you can't. That's absolutely normal. We all live life our different ways. It translates out differently in our bodies. Just breathing into the tension. Exhaling out anything that's coming to mind that no longer feels nourishing to you. Releasing the hands, releasing our strap. Coming back to center. That was everything that we learned this week. Really awesome practice. All of these are hip opening. You know all of the different tricks and techniques and, and the different alignment, all of them. Um, I hope you enjoy them. And now you know how um, one way to, to use them, you know how to use them to open up your hips, to open up your chest, and also to make you feel a little bit more um, happy and centered. So come down onto our backs and enjoy our savasana. Hands to our knees, chin into our chest, shoulders together in the front, sliding down onto the back, one vertebrae at a time. 
We're going to engage a full body stretch before we enter our Savasana, hands to our heart. Shoulders engaged in the back, gently reaching the arms up and overhead, ankles together, pointing the toes. Reaching through the toes, reaching through the fingers, engaging a very light full body stretch for three deep breaths, engaging all of your muscles. Just two more. Still letting go of the belly on inhale though. And then releasing all your muscles, hands back to the hips, closing our eyes, doing a mental body scan, releasing any tension in our toes, our ankles, our shins and our calves our knees and our quads and our hips and our belly, our lower back, our upper back and our shoulder. Down each of our arms to our wrists, through our fingers and back up to our neck. Gently rocking it side to side, forward and backward. Finding our comfort, resting our head, Closing our eyes, returning our breath to our everyday normal breathing. For the next one minute, I have no, we have nowhere to go and nowhere to be but right here and right now. Listening only to the sounds and feeling only the sensations in our immediate present. Our only responsibility is to be. When we're ready, and only when we're ready, bringing attention back to the body, gently massaging the fingers and the toes amongst one another. Allowing one knee to come into the chest at a time, hands to our heart, gently rocking over to our right side, preparing our body for motion and our sleeping beauty. Bring your attention back to the breath, deep breaths in, complete breaths out. And then pressing through the ground, coming back to our seat, hands together, heart center, reflecting on the intention we set in the beginning of our practice only moments in which we met that intention. Ending our practice, bowing to one another, bowing to our beautiful bodies, and honoring the light within one another, which is the same. Namaste. Thank you so much for another amazing practice. Um, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. It's gonna to be an awesome review of everything we learned. And it's going to be new and fun ways that we haven't done it before. Keeping keeping our practice fun and enlivening, showing you that that it's easy to we just gotta to let ourselves be a little bit more creative and and not so rigid sometimes. Um, I hope you're enjoying this. Please feel free to comment below. I've been loving any comments I've been getting under the videos. They're so nice, and you guys are so amazing. Um, the thumbnails were actually changed because. One of you awesome viewers messaged me, let me know that my thumbnails were not up to par. So these, these, these comments, these messages, they mean the world, and I really appreciate them. Namaste. See you tomorrow.